Hey everyone, Jonathan Silva here with Pragmatic Works. For this video, what I'm gonna use is Power Automate to dynamically create a table in Excel. Let's jump right in. So here you have my Excel table. It's really not a table actually at all. It's, a, it's just a worksheet here. It's a range that we have that I'd like to create a table. So I'd like it to automatically, when I either add this table to my SharePoint document library, when I get this from someone else, to automatically create a table on it. Maybe when it's modified, something, right? The, the trigger doesn't matter here. But I'd like this to be formatted as a table automatically. So the first thing is, you can see my range that I have. I have three columns and seven rows. Now the first row here is our header, so we'll keep that in mind with our table range. But what I'd like this to be is dynamic. So no matter if I have seven rows or 70 or 7,000 in seven rows, I want to make sure that all of the data within the rows that I have are contained within that table. Also a thing to note is how many columns we have because that's gonna be important here for us to understand the range that we have within the table that we are formatting. You can also see I have it sorted within a SharePoint document library. Once again, if this is in OneDrive, there's really no difference between the different actions here. You're just gonna to point to the other uh, connector within Power Automate itself. And then we can come over to our flow. And so far, I've started off with my trigger or an item or file is modified here in SharePoint. Again, this could be something else. When it's added, it really doesn't matter. It's gonna be the same process here. The one thing to note is make sure you have the site address, you have the library name in this case, and then the folder that we're pointing to. In this case, the folder, if we're going to the general documents here within SharePoint, is just gonna be the shared documents, is the, the general folder we have there. So I'm gonna select that. Then the next step we have here is to go ahead and create the table for Excel. So I'm gonna add a step here. In this case, we are gonna choose Excel Online, our business version there. Go ahead and then grab the create table action. Now, just as we did earlier, we're gonna go ahead and match up our location library and the file together. So let's go and find the location. Again, it is crucial that we go find the SharePoint location for that exact area. And mine is my testing site, there it is. We're gonna to go to our document library. There's our documents and the file. Now this is really important. This won't work. It'll fail right here if you don't match this correctly. So go ahead and put in your forward slash. And what we wanna do is use the dynamic content for file name with extensions. So we're gonna come down here within our dynamic content and we're gonna find that from our trigger. So file name with extension. Okay, that's exactly what we wanted to have here. We need that in order to point to the right file. And this is the dynamic operation here. We're not choosing just this exact file, but any file that has been uh, modified, it, modified in this case, we're gonna go ahead and utilize that one and create a table there. So it's not just the one we're pointing to. Now for the table range, this table range, we're gonna get from Excel and we're gonna use the offset formula in Excel in order to grab that here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that I have on the side, and I put this in the, the description below as well. This offset formula is pointing to sheet number one. That is the default name for our worksheet here. You can see that's here as well. If yours is renamed and has spaces, you're gonna to need to make sure you go ahead and add in your single quotes that surround that table name in order to properly carry that. Okay. The other part is the most crucial area is right here, this final number. This final number here designates the number of columns that you have within your range and the table that you want to create. Okay. Right here it says 10, but if I take a look at my Excel worksheet here, I only have one, two, and three. Therefore, I need to change that value from 10 to three that's going to ensure that it's gonna properly match up to what I wanna have. Finally, within the table name, if I want, I can just add in sheet one here as well, so I can point to that. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can leave it blank, unless you wanna name it something different. Um, within the column names, you can go ahead and add in column names as well, if they are not already there. However, I already have some in here. Okay, name, favorite, color, and state, so therefore, I'm just gonna leave that blank. Now what we can do is go ahead and test this 
So I'm going to select test here. We're going to do a manual trigger, save and test, and go ahead from here and see what this looks like. So we're going to wait for this to start spinning and we can go ahead and start to make a test. In fact, what I'll do is I'm just going to rename this. This should work for me if I rename this accounts data for today and rename that. That should give me a just modify just now. And now what I can see when I run go to my flow is there we have it. The flow has run successfully. When an item or file is modified, we're creating a table. There is our table that we're pointing to correctly there. If I go now and check that Excel file, I should see a table created automatically here that's now waiting. There, there you go. There's a proper range as well that's waiting for me to work with. I can come in if I'd like to do any filtering. We now have the filtering opportunity here because it is a table. It gives us all of the great information that we now have a table working with here in Excel. Thanks for joining me here again today, working with Power Automate in the cloud and Excel and how we can dynamically add in a table to any Excel file that we want to point to, whether it's in SharePoint or in OneDrive, as long as you can get to it, it's available to use. Thanks again. Don't forget to go ahead and drop in a like and subscribe below to get more content from myself and all of us here at Pragmatic Works.